Is Yevon Zhang and Bertrand Davis will present this uh, talk on concentration profile of fission trophy products in Catholic wars. I will continue our free cell talk. talk. <coughs> I'm going to talk about the <coughs> present profile of free cell talk product in catalyst pose. First of all, I'd like to introduce a very simple mic. It's a very simple freezer trough mechanism that's a simple polymerization at any chain growth intermediate can pick up a CS2 to grow or pick up hydrogen to terminate or to go through hydrogen abstraction to form all the points not shown here. Traditionally, we can, we can simplify it, say there is a chain growth probability to find as alpha, and we assume that it's a constant. In this situation, we say it's a single alpha. But in practice, very often we observe alpha is a function of carbon number. It, it looks like a true straight line, actually it's a curve, but people just say two alpha or multiple alpha. So this is the little background about free cell trop. Now, let's come back to our talk. I'm going to talk about concentration profile in catalyst pose. That's actually some internal diffusion of product. <coughs> um, you know internal, how important internal diffusion is. With that knowledge, we can, that will help us design our reactor, design our catalyst. And, uh, most important motivation is about that two alpha thing. As I said, there are a number of mechanisms and models in the literature. About that two alpha, there are a number of models to explain that observation. The most prevailing one is a diffusion model. <coughs> This model has been proposed by big names and has been supported by other big names, so this is very popular for over a decade in <laughs> the physical area. And recently we pick up this topic and we review models and we figure out this model is fundamentally wrong because there's a confusion about what diffusion and diffusion limitation is. Diffusion is diffusion. Diffusion limitation is diffusion limitation. They are two different, totally different concepts, even though they are <coughs> related. And also, there is a people that assume single alpha, a single phase product, even though there is a vapor liquid separation, they just assume vapor only. Again, there is a misunderstanding of what chemical potential is. So the objective of this work, I'm going to tell you this uh, internal diffusion thing. I'm going to show you the hydrocarbon product concentration profile in a pose. And under what conditions this internal diffusion limitation may exist and how it changes with carbon number. <coughs> Of a free of reaction is actually very complicated, but it can also be very simple. We can simplify it to all paraffins in this work. All of the assumptions in this work are not mandatory, it's just to simplify our discussion. We can we don't need we can use other assumptions but still work. We are not change the general conclusion. So in the, this work, we assume all of the products are paraffin and follow single alpha. Reaction kinetics, very simple, first order on hydrogen. So for each hydrocarbon product, the generation rate follows this equation. 
So it, we express that in terms of high treason concentration. So this is Ki is the generation rate constant is a function of carbon number and alpha. <coughs> We have all kind of reactor configuration for physiotrope reactions. We just pick up a very simple one. That's a CSTR sterile reactor. Hydrogen and CO flows in and vapor flows up, extra liquid also flow up. So for spherical catalyst particles, we simply look at the hydrogen material balance of hydrogen or <coughs> hydrocarbon this is a diffusion term, hydrogen decreasing rate and hydrocarbon <coughs> generation rate. So the boundary can be changed. This is, a, is something is a surface concentration. So these are two equations are solvable analytically. We can have these two. This is phi h for hydrogen theta module. Phi i for hydrogen theta module for any hydrocarbon product. For this, this is a very simple one, for, and for for hydrogen concentration distribution, but for product concentration, we sim this is, we sim can simply look at this theta module. If this is one increase, concentration increase, decrease, decrease. So, so we. Again, we can simply look at this one, the definition of theta module. This is Ki is a generation rate constant, and this is a hydrogen surface concentration. It's not a... So this, this hydrogen, for any hydrocarbon product, this is hydrogen surface concentration is the same. So if all of the products are in vapor phase, surface concentration decrease with the increasing R carbon number by a factor of alpha. Also, this is generation rate constant decrease with the increasing carbon number by a factor of alpha. So these two kinds of uh, the field module is totally dependent on diffusivity. However, <coughs> if there is the vapor liquid separation, Okay, I still the same, but surface concentration change. So even though there is vapor and liquid, even vapor and liquid in equilibrium for any components, chemical potential in vapor and in liquid are equal. We still cannot assume it's vapor because the standard Gibbs free energy of liquid is different from vapor and. The difference can be quantum, can be <coughs> is a function of partial pressure, the, the vapor pressure. So that is the we, we cannot say oh, <coughs> since the chemical potentials are equal, we can simply assume it's vapor. It's not true. So in this work, we use we make up three conditions. To do simulation because we need to calculate the concentrations in liquid phase. So this pressure and conversion is we we don't discuss that in this work. So we look at this is temperature and alpha value. This one is a low, pretty normal for the copper catalyst, pretty high alpha value, low temperature, and this one is a. <coughs> Pretty typical for the iron catalyst that we use in our lab, low alpha and high temperature. And under these cases, we are not going to produce liquid or produce gas only if we run in fluid type bed reactor or fixed bed reactor. But in sturdy reactor, we still have vapor liquid separation because we have starting solvent. And this situation is a very high alpha value and pretty high temperature. It's a I don't know if it's real or not. I just make up this one for we we know why we we need this conditions. So for simulation, we simply we make some simple assumptions. All of the products are for carbon one to carbon hundred and selectivity for a single alpha distribution. 
Uh, uh, this uh, also a zinc vapor idea based idea liquid, and this is a vapor first of hydrocarbon products, hydrogen solubility. Another thing is the diffusivity of hydrocarbon products. Some people use this one. Some people use this one. Of course, this exponential dependence decreases very fast, and some people argue this one over predicts the dependence of diffusivity on carbon dump. And then this one is more realistic or not. Uh, I don't know, but for small molecules, we are pretty sure this one over predicts. But it's not important for this work. As we mentioned, that we can simply look at the theta module, use the theta module to look at the concentration profile. If all of the products are in vapor phase for those high temperature synthesis, theta module is a theta module of carbon two. Increase with carbon number, so it's an obvious that with the happier the products, the more change to have it, diffusion limitation. So either one to preserve the conditions. But if there is vapor deeper separation, say in sturdy reactors, we have liquid product and vapor product. This is the typical vapor product. This line is a, is a single alpha line. And this is after, say, 20 hours, 100 hours, 1,000 hours. After 1,000 hours, it reaches steady state. There's always a negative deviation from single alpha plus never reach this is straight on. But if we look at the light materials, they below carbon 20, this is straight on. That says the, in the vapor phase, the product follows a single alpha, even though there is vapor liquid separation because most of the materials go to vapor phase. So for this is light components, Without carbon 20, vapor is a Y is a vapor molar fraction, X is a molar fraction in liquid phase. The ratio is a function of vapor pressure. The relative volatility of hydrocarbon product. <coughs> so if we look at the theta module, the ratio of theta module becomes the competition of diffusivity and volatility. So if this one is higher than one, we say the higher carbon number, the heavier material, the more change to have the fusion limitation, but if it's less than one, it's opposite. So if, if the diffusivity follows this power law, there's always less than one, there's no hope for a higher material to have more change of the fusion limitation. But if the diffusivity follows this exponential correlation, we have two cases. If temperature is lower than 304, according to our correlation, wet pressure correlation, this is theta module can be less than one. But only higher than 300 degrees C, is a, it can be higher than one. This is the reason we make the condition 310. <coughs> In a, in a liquid phase, in a liquid phase due to the liquid vapor liquid separation, liquid composition actually increase, but it does not increase forever. It increases to some key point and then decreases. It's a very typical feature of multi-component separation. And in this case, as I mentioned that because it's the alpha value is very low and temperature relatively high, we are not going to generate a liquid phase product. But in a sturdy reactor CSTR, we have vapor only and eventually the reactor will dry out. So liquid phase will actually still decrease with increasing carbon number, but it's not going to affect the product concentration distribution. So now let's look at the 
the theta module, if you look at the whole product <coughs> under <coughs> this, this two conditions is uh, low temperature, as you say, when the temperature is lower than 340 C, theta module has to decrease with the increasing carbon number to some point. For those uh, really heavy material, it also increase, but they, uh, they don't contribute to a product distribution. They cause catalyst to plug up and eventually the activation. Only for low, high temperature, higher than 304, I said, we may cut this one 310, it increases very slowly and go up. This is in terms of theta module, if we of course, we can also look at the concentration directly. So under this condition, I make up a, a 230 and alpha a point at five. So if the catalyst efficiency is 94% of hydrogen theta module to one, the relative concentration of hydrocarbon is this carbon two is here. This is the catalyst center, this is surface. Two, three. So the higher carbon number, the more uniform the hydrocarbon, the product concentration in the pores. So after that, it increases until after 35, it jumps up to really high. At least the work, we assume all of the products are paraffin. Or some people may argue, well, there's some olefin and olefin reabsorption model talks about olefin. Well, that, that, that's, that's not a problem. We can also also include the, the olefin reactivity here. Still, we have to assume it's a single alpha reaction and <laughs> CO and hydrogen reaction is, is not affected by olefin reaction. Also, we have to know the all different reaction kinetics. We assume it's a single, but it's first order, and it's the reaction rate constant is independent on carbon number. So we can make a, this is the material balance, very complicated. Material for any carbon number is the solution. A lot of very complicated coefficient there. But we, So with those, that only for solution, we can get this one. If all the products are paraffin, concentration goes down and then up. If all of the products are olefin, it goes up, goes down further, even faster than paraffin. So there's a no change. There's a no change for olefin to survive for And summary to this work is if there is no internal diffusion limitation of reactants, there's no diffusion limitation, uh, there's no diffusion limitation of product. And there are several different situations in so in the presence of, of it diffusion limitation of reactant and if you simply follow this one. If all of everything is in the vapor, is the product is single phase, this relative concentration can increase with increasing carbon number. But if there's two phase vapor liquid separation, we have two solutions. Only one temperature is higher than 300, uh, concentration can increase. Otherwise, relative concentration has to decrease with the increasing carbon number. So the conclusion all is this uh, internal diffusion limitation does not work for two alpha distribution. Thank you for your attention. It's time for uh, one or two questions. Yeah. Uh, Question. Uh, how did you account for the diffusivity of liquids versus gases? You, especially at 230 Celsius, you're going to have a lot of liquids there and gases. 
-hmm. Can you account for that if you put uh, significantly different diffusivities there? The diffusivities, we, no, we just copy those two correlations from literature. Other people <coughs> use it in their models. Do you realize that uh, low boilers will have uh, significantly higher diffusivities than uh, molecules with uh, 30 or 25 carbon atoms? Can you repeat what? The, the diffusivity, you have two different categories of molecules there. Uh -huh. Low boilers and high boilers. When you have large molecular weights, <laughs> mm -hmm. I bet these molecules are gonna be liquid inside mm -hmm. the pores. So mm -hmm. the diffusivities are significantly lower, orders of magnitude lower. Diffusivity is significantly lower than the smaller molecules. No, we, diffusivity, one is a, one is, one follows <coughs> Exponents, one goes down exponentially with molecular weight, one goes down with uh, the power law, minus 0.6. That's the diffusivity other people use. Uh, we don't know the exact diffusivity, but we know the ratio, how fast or how slow they change. So, and in this work, we, we, we don't know the absolute number of any hydrocarbon product we just compare the ratio and this the thin distribution we compare the ratio on and we, we, we don't have to know the exact value of any one. Do you do you feel the need to put external mass transfer limitations outside the pellet? That so is that, that is external diffusion limitation, not maybe true in fixed bed of reactor. And this is the reason in, I guess, uh, yesterday uh, we, uh, a member from our group, Dr. Zhang, talked about our supercritical, unsupercritical reactor. Yeah. And this is, that is to wash down the external layer. So that at least <laughs> the yeah, inner layer. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been, yeah. Okay. There was another question? Uh, other questions? Um, in, in terms of, uh, is there any uh, limitation in terms of, uh, I'm thinking about shape selectivity here, so mm -hmm. the radius of the floor mm -hmm. where this type of modeling is valid, has that been considered? <coughs> because that, that is uh, probably, they, they use that exponential correlation, mm -hmm. they, they can study that already. For, for, for small, for simple molecules, Diffusivity, we simply use that Chapman and S of correlation. That is the is proportional to the reciprocal of the, the, the power law of what, 0.5. Is it, is it proportional to molecular weight well, raised to the power 0.5 minus power 0.5? And this one, some people use 0.6. That's a stronger dependent. Some people use exponential. <laughs> So even they consider that already. But that exponential correlation, I bet they, I didn't go back to the original literature. They copy from others, <laughs> and I copy from them. I didn't go back there. I guess they, that works for very big molecules of polymerization, work, let's say several hundred thousands of molecules. But in future, so we don't have that long chain. So we have, say, typically within 100. In our lab, we observe up to 80, carbon 80. I don't know, so we don't know that it's true or not. But very surely that one wouldn't work for the carbon two, three, four, five, that's small molecules. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes, thank you. <laughs> we have a